Cuba's economy has been in shambles for decades, and the recent energy crisis has brought the country even lower. Many say the broken situation in Cuba is the result of America's 60-year-long set of sanctions stemming back to the Cold War era. When the sanctions were first imposed in 1962 by U.S. President John F. Kennedy, Fidel Castro was the nation's revolutionary leader. He was a communist and that was deemed a threat by Washington. Arms sales to uh, Havana had been banned four years earlier, so Cuba had to lean on its major ally, the Soviet Union, to fill the gap. In the following decades, the embargo was extended and came with even more punitive features. At first, the U.S. just cut off most of its own trade with Cuba, but later the embargo was expanded through multilateral policies of economic denial, which severely inhibited Cuba's efforts to foster economic relations with other countries. Many believed it is the U.S. that has crushed Cuba's trade and economy and even its monetary system. Cubans have been voicing their displeasure online, saying that their main worries are focused on a stable food supply, something so basic as come a luxury for many. With this disrupted monetary system, one cannot easily, for example, using Cuban pieces to purchase necessity and food. The country is also suffering from constant blackouts because of rising oil prices and a deepening economic crisis. However, the U.S. stance is that the disastrous situation should be blamed on Cuba's weak system of governance. U.S. officials have always excused themselves by saying their sanctions do not include medicine and food, implying the sanctions are only targeted at the government, but not the common people. Also, they say they do not directly forbid Cuba from trading with other countries. And most importantly, they've repeatedly used the Cuba Missile Crisis as a crutch and excuse to justify their embargo and sanctions. Regardless, this has been the reality imposed on Cuba by the United States for 60 years. But even with the collapse of the Soviet Union and with the world entering the era of globalization, does any country feel the U.S. should change its policy directed at Cuba? Earlier this month, the U.N. General Assembly rebuked the U.S. embargo on Cuba. Overwhelmingly, 185 countries voted in favor of a non-binding resolution condemning the embargo, with the U.S. and Israel voting voting against. No surprise there. But this is actually the 30th time the UN has rebuked the decade-old US policy. Also, most of Europe and Latin America had reinstated their relations with Cuba, and in recent years, China has appeared as a stronger partner. In 2021, the two signed a cooperation plan through which China can help develop Cuba's infrastructure, energy, and other industries. Cuban President Diaz-Canel is now visiting China. His visit will also cover economic and energy issues.